In today's video, we will be discussing about systemic effects of inflammation and morphological patterns of acute inflammation. Our learning objectives are to know the systemic effects of inflammation and to understand the morphological types of inflammation. So, how does inflammation present clinically? Patient can have fever. There will be an elevation in acute phase proteins such as C-reactive protein, elevation of ESR, erythrocyte sedimentation rate, which is a simple test for systemic inflammatory response. ESR has a great prognostic value. It can lead to secondary amyloidosis, an elevation in the white blood cell count known as leukocytosis. They can be increased pulse, blood pressure. If the infection spreads, they can be rigors, chills, anorexia, somnolence, malaise. And if it is very severe, it can lead to sepsis. So, whenever there is fever, fever is caused by lipopolysaccharides called as exogenous pyrogens and interleukin 1 and tumor necrosis factor called as endogenous pyrogens. These lead to increase in cyclooxygenase that converts arachidonic acid into prostaglandins which stimulates the production of neurotransmitters, resets the temperature to a higher level. So whenever there is fever, we notice that there is a high temperature. Why does this high temperature happen? Because the temperature is reset at a higher level. Next coming to elevated plasma levels of acute phase protein. This synthesis is stimulated by cytokines, especially interleukin 6. And there are three proteins. C-reactive protein, fibrinogen and serum amyloid A. CRP and serum amyloid A act as opsonins and fix complement. Fibrinogen binds to erythrocytes and causes them to form stacks or role, which thus increases the ESR. Coming to leukocytosis, so what is the normal WBC count? Normal white blood cell count is 4000 to 11000. So when the counts are very high, above 11000, 15000, 20000, okay, and they can even reach to 40000 to 1 lakh. They are called as leukemoid reaction. What are leukemoid reactions? They resemble leukemia, but they are not having blasts. Blasts are absent, but there is an increase in the immature precursors. So the cause is again initially tumor necrosis factor and interleukin 1 with colony stimulating factors and bacterial infections causing neutrophilia, whereas viral infections can. Uh, viral infections lead to lymphocytosis, so infectious mononucleosis, mumps, germ diseases, all the examples causing lymphocytosis, bronchial asthma, hay fever, parasite infestation cause eosinophilia. This is a very common question in the exam. List four causes of eosinophilia. So here you have bronchial asthma, hay fever, parasite infestation, local syndrome, certain malignancies. All these can cause eosinophilia. What are the other manifestation? Increased heart rate and blood pressure, decreased sweating. Rigors and chills, anorexia or loss of appetite, severe bacterial infections causing sepsis and DIC. DIC is disseminated intravascular coagulation. Metabolic disturbances including acidosis and hypotensive shock. When there is excessive or defective inflammation, what happens? Defective inflammation leads to susceptibility to infection. Excessive inflammation leads to Allergy. So that's why there is a very new uh, th uh, hypothesis called as hygiene hypothesis, which says that when a person or individual is not exposed to bacteria, what happens? Their immune system becomes defective in development and that can lead to rise in allergy and autoimmune diseases. Coming to the next set, now one session is over. Now we are going to talk about the morphological patterns of acute inflammation. In this, we will be discussing about serous inflammation, fibrinous inflammation, suppurative or purulent inflammation, and ulcers or ulcerative lesions. So, what is a serous inflammation? Basically, serous will have clear fluid. 
okay and there will be watery relatively protein to a fluid an example would be when we burn ourselves when we burn our hands the fingers with hot coffee what happens we get a veiny formation okay a blister forms that is serous inflammation coming to fibrinous inflammation inflammation which is associated with the deposit of fibrinous material okay this could be seen as fibrinous pericarditis so there will be a fibrin meshwork which develops as a manifestation of inflammation next suppurative or purulent inflammation that can lead to abscess formation what is the abscess abscess is a localized collection of neutrophils with a necrotic background so abscess is nothing but in common language we say pus right pus abscess has pus pus is nothing but is a aggregate of neutrophils with a necrotic background with cellular debris finally coming to ulcer ulcer is a break in the continuity of the skin or the mucous membrane <clears throat> to summarize the systemic effects of inflammation are fever it could be elevated acute face protein such as crp elevated esr leukocytosis and we should not forget rigors chills okay, all these are the effects of inflammation and in severe condition it can lead to sepsis and disseminated intravascular coagulation and morphologically inflammation can be present as serous inflammation fibrinous ulcerative and suppurative types these are my references and please leave your doubts any if you want me to cover any particular topic right or if you have any doubts pertaining to my topics please leave it in the comment section and please like subscribe and share this channel